This is a 1908 Cadillac, one cylinder. It's the last year of production for a Cadillac, making the one cylinder. The only year for the one cylinder is to have running boards. It, uh, they were only built 1,565 the last year of production. There's only about 15 known of the 08s left out there. It's got, it's got rack and pinion steering, which people brag about nowadays to have it on cars. This came with it back then. Cadillac had it in 03, started out with. The uh, piston is a 5x5. Five five. It is a hinged connected rod. And this weighs probably 10 pounds easily, if not more. So that's quite a bit of weight slinging around in there, jumping. The uh, cost of this car new was about $850. It came with cow lights and a tail light. $50 additional for headlights, another $50 for a windshield, and yet another $50 if you wanted a top on it. So they charge you for accessories back then, as usual. The, uh, it is a dry cell ignition. And uh, for the throttle on this, in some ways you could say it doesn't have a carburetor. It's got a, uh, a uh, metal flap that's, as the uh, intake spins, she lifts up a needle valve, lets gas dribble down on a real fine mesh cone-shaped uh, screen which then on the intake, she sucks those fumes in, and a little gas with it, and that's your, that's your stroke, or your firing. There is, and the throttle is actually, it just holds the intake valve open longer. Well, Cadillac was rather advanced for its day, but it, like, like I said, one cylinder cars, the last year production, they were starting to go into the four cylinders. People wanted the bigger cars, luxury cars. Cadillac was known as being a luxury automobile. To start the car, you have the gas tank, it's located underneath the seat. And there's an oil pump here, which oils, each line goes to a certain item, on one for each side of the mains. So one side for one main, one for another, one for on top of the cylinder, and one for the uh, connecting rod down inside the engine drops right down on top. And you can see the size of the flywheel there, so it's got a little bit of weight behind it. But in order to start it, you lift this rod here which lifts up the uh, needle valve on the carburetor until you see a little bit of gas dribbling on the ground like that. This is a compression release to help ease starting it. And this car also has a safety feature in here, a gate that slides back and forth that will not let you put the crank in unless the spark is retarded. Less chance of ever breaking an arm like some of the other cars were known for. This is the point setup right here. They call it a commutator back then for uh, when to hit the spark. And in fact, right here is where you can see that bar comes across. So the, the spark was advanced, so I can't put the crank in there. It's blocking it. Just a safety feature. I'll move the arm to see what I mean. It opens up. You can put the crank in now. Closed up. Can't get into it. Now you can see how the uh, intake valve works. As you can see, here's the exhaust, uh, intake, excuse me, pulling in the fume. All I gotta do is move it, and she'll lift up a little bit more, give it more gas. Exhaust down below. This is for the needle valve. Remember I said it lifts up, spins a little bit, reseats it. And that's located under here, and that screen is inside here, the gooseneck. So, like I say, you can't really classify that as a carburetor, but it is. And this is what they usually use for car, uh, spark plugs back then. They had a two-wire two lead with the plugs like that in the back, inside the cylinder. But most people nowadays swap it over to a more modern, just so they can run one spark plug. But for shows, judging, they put these back in. Then you're accurate. And one other thing about this car, sevens and eights 
came with an oil pan underneath to catch the oil dripping on the ground. Rare you find them. Most people took them off because they were a fire hazard. If you've ever caught fire in there, you, you couldn't get to it to get it out. I have it. I don't drive with it on either. Most people took them off, leave them off, for just for safety reasons. It is a uh, 41 tooth here, 12 in the front. I changed it. It used to be a 10. It gives me a little more speed going down the road. Back then they wanted it for the torque because of the mud roads and such. But these are the brakes here. And they get greasy. It, it leaves a little bit for uh, to be desired for braking ability. It's a cable that runs down. If you ever broke that cable, well, no brakes. And this is the only year that also had this extension here. They tried to give it a little smoother ride. You push on this, you can sometimes, you, you watch for a drop of oil just to make sure everything's pumping. Now you get my oil level there, how much oil I've got going into the system. The planetary transmission. Low speed, then you got there, you push, pull this lever back for reverse, and forward locks it up in direct drive. That's a, that's a uh, release to bypass the muffler, give me a little more power for climbing hills. But Henry Leland was desi designed this car. It, it, uh, it, it was the uh, remains of the Ford Corporation when he first went under. He rebuilt it, came up with this, and Leland is known for Leland and Falconer. Machine Tool Corporation. Machinist, everything precise, interchange parts. In 1908, this car, the, the uh, one-cylinder cars won the DeWar Trophy in England for interchangeable parts. They took three cars, mixed them all up, and put in some new parts, and to prove that, you didn't have to do no machining, no filing, everything would just bolt right up. They took them out and drove them around the countryside in England. And they won the DeWar Trophy for that. Foot operated for forward. Reverse.
What's really strange is, look at this steering wheel. That's one piece of wood. How do they bend that back then? In a full circle like that. There were some smart people back in the day. This is ignition here. The co one a coil box. There's the coil. Basically the same as a Model T coil. You might even be able to hear a little buzzing right there every time it comes around to hit the one cell, the one. And then to kill it, of course, just right, put right in the dead center. And there's the key. <laughs> Hopefully nobody would steal, but there's nothing to nothing to fake that key.